communications plan, I decided to do a look back and show you um, how far we've come since you decided to create this position and then hire me. Um, so the position uh, was officially underway in August. And so I just uh, took my time and compiled some statistics showing you the difference between then and now. And so that you can see maybe the difference that, it, that it's been for the city to have a communications person in place like myself. So since the position was created and I started, I've issued 53 press releases. I've sent out, um, uh, I've edited or corrected or approved another 28. Since late August, the city has received 618 positive stories in the media. That's an average of 62 stories per month. I did a comparison to give it context. I went back to um, April of last year, there were 34 stories. April of this year, 2023, we had 85, so uh, more than double. I think that it helps to have somebody full-time who's pushing out a positive narrative for the story and kind of controlling uh, the city's image in a way that uh, benefits uh, the city as a whole. Uh, I have posted 404 posts with photos and or videos on Facebook, uh, quite a lot. Um, I really uh, enjoy promoting all of the city's services, community events and programs and promotions, new hires, ribbon cuttings and more. And of course, that's, uh, it's, it's very easy to do when there's so much good news to report. There's always library functions, parks and rec have a lot going on, um, MLK Community Center. Uh, there's always, you know, like this morning we had the police, uh, four new police recruits were hired and their swearing in ceremony was this morning, so that's been posted. So there's always a lot of good news going on that I like to share and amplify that message. Um, uh, I got up, I got connected with uh, Channel 4, pretty much hit the ground running with them when I started and reclaimed the city's weekly spot. So every Wednesday, as you know, I'm sure I've bothered enough of you asking you to be guests. So since August, I've booked 34 guests to promote uh, city programs or events. That's always good. Uh, and they often repeat that uh, they have it in uh, print on their website and then they've got the video and they do another mention on one of their nightly newscasts. So it's like quadruple the coverage for us when we can get that spot. Since August of last year, the number of followers on the city's Facebook page have grown from 7,212 to 8,107, which is a difference of 895 more followers. And um, I always think it's important to provide good customer service in the city. So I've uh, made the effort to respond directly to more than 100 questions from residents or stakeholders, either through email, phone call, or Facebook. Um, and of course, if I don't have the answer, I reach out the, to that department director, um, which is most often public works. Mike's been very <laughs> helpful in getting answers for me or um, his department employees. And, um, Although it's pained me as a former journalist, I can also say I've officially killed two stories and issued four no comments. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of gives you a, a background on that. And so just another piece of a little bit of progress here. I just wanted to show you, when I came in and interviewed for this job, I showed you what the city's Twitter page looked, at that, looked like at that time. No logo, no photo. Um, it was inactive since 2013 with 24 followers. This is what it looks like today. Not as many followers as I had hoped, but definitely um, progress. We've got a logo, we've got a photo. I added a description. We've got the uh, website listed so that people can find us and get more information. Okay, moving on. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? No, I'm sorry, I didn't yes. mean to interrupt. That's but fine. How many, uh, I mean, I see your figures for how many people we have on social media. How many have we made contact with without social media? Because I think that's the most important area that we have to focus on. We have a lot, a huge number of our residents who do not have social media. And I think that's where we're lacking at. Do, do we have any contact with any people besides social media? Um, yes, but it's very, it's minimal. The bulk of the questions do come in through social media. Um, either they leave a comment on a post or they direct message. I do get a few phone calls from time to time uh, or if things are forwarded to me. I've gotten a few emails, but the, the bulk do come in through the Facebook page, okay. which kind of speaks to the reach that, that the, the, 
the the potential that you can reach through that the city's Facebook page. Yes. But in my mind, it underscores the fact that we need for those people who aren't on social media, um, we need some kind of connectivity, whether it's a link on the home page or something, you know, you got a question, talk to Sarah or whatever, or some kind of app, something, because I agree with Moses, there are a lot of people just not on social media. Now, mm -hmm. sorry, we're ha uh, Tim is, uh, aren't we about to roll out a new um, software, called, it's 311, where it's like a, you can click and ask your question I saw that in his email earlier today. It's it's a it's a it's a process where you can uh, it's a software program where you can go in and you can uh, it's called the the three one one and you can go in and you can uh, log your log your um, complaint or your concern or whatever it may be. Tim's moving forward very He's slowly. <laughs> I think that's I something that's under consideration, not necessarily something where you know. Ready, I really don't want to interrupt your presentation, but I mean. If that's the fact, we have a cohort of people who do not have the electronic means to communicate with us mm -hmm. then. I'm just using my parents for an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom, she may be, mm -hmm. but my dad for sure, he sits old school. He's reading the paper mm -hmm. from front to back. Mm -hmm. He does not text, he does not email, he doesn't do any of that. And he has, there's, there's a huge cohort that are like that. So if we're focusing all our effort on, efforts on social media or electronic means, we're still behind the curve because mm -hmm. the whole issue was trying to connect with, and I, I get it, we're not gonna be able to connect with everyone in the, in the city, but we're missing a huge population, not even including the refugees that don't have that communication because of language barrier. So even if we get it out on social media, because I know they do have those, those means, but they don't, we don't have the language translations to get to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, we agree with you and, and the plan does recognize that item uh, number 16 is identify methods to connect with residents through, through uh, it says non-traditional means of communications, but, you know, recognize that certain populations may not have access to the internet in their home or, or on social media. So while we don't have the exact plan on how to address that, we are, we are cognizant of that, um, you know, newspapers and radio, uh, Sarah's done a lot of work with them, of course, and that's, uh, you know, more traditional format for connecting with uh, residents. Right, Todd and I were actually just discussing this um, this morning, I think, or Friday. Can't recall, but it was it was a recent conversation trying to figure out, you know, a, a path moving forward which we can expand the reach to non-traditional, you know, through non-traditional means. So which it's sure definitely it a, a valid a lot to point. Newspaper, television stations, radio, mm -hmm. you know, which are your more traditional means of getting information out. Can we include stuff in the water bill? Sure, I, I don't see why not. It would just be a matter of me coordinating. Um, I mean, just because that. that gets mailed to most mm -hmm. everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've asked that before, and mm -hmm. nothing ever seems to go forward with it. Linda, do you know the process for including something in the water bill? It's not as effective as it used to be because honestly, a lot of people don't even look at their water bill and just pay it online or anything that's in it other than their bill, they throw away, so. I mean, even using examples of what we do for some of our departments, we have Parks and Rec who sends out a brochure quarterly or yearly. I mean, something like that, if we even send a newsletter out, something that gives us some kind of physical way to get more communication to our residents than, than social media. We have, to, we have to find another way besides this social media and electronic version because we're, again, we're cutting off a huge population that vote, that need to get that information out, especially the programming we have. It targets them, but they don't know the information, so they struggle. That's why we get most of the calls of how to do this and how to do that because they don't know. And I even the townships do print. I think they each do twice, twice a year, spring and fall. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a quick, can we get back on the presentation? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to ignore it. No, no, I'm sorry. Don't so be sorry. I didn't want to interrupt. I'm sorry. I, hopefully there's, I, I know there's going to be at the end a chance for questions and answers. And I just want to make sure that we get through the whole presentation. Um, so if you don't mind, 
we'll keep those thoughts and we'll, we'll keep throwing the ideas out. Okay, no, I think that's a great idea, um, Alderman Robinson. So uh, just touching on the overview, um, I just wanted to encapsulate how important it is to have effective communications. Um, as we know that that helps build community pride and satisfaction. The, no, the more that citizens know about their city services and how their tax dollars are at work, the more they will appreciate and take pride in their community. Okay, moving on to purpose. So obviously the purpose of this uh, plan is to support the city's strategic goals, enhance the image and reputation of Rock Island, maintain access to timely and helpful information, while contributing to the growth of the city through positive and responsive messaging. And that has been uh, my main focus since uh, being hired here. And it is already uh, stated in the city council goal number two, objective two, uh, that part of your objective was to uh, create a position like this. Um, and of course it says, I will update and I will uh, maintain and update the plan. So at the end of the presentation, when I get feedback from you, like I just took a couple notes, uh, Todd and I will work, um, obviously it says draft on the front and I will add to it and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, uh, heading into goals, there's quite a few because there's you know, quite a lot to cover there. So of course the goal is to advance the strategic uh, vision to help position Rock Island as a growing sustainable community. Uh, obviously uh, one of the, the main purpose, number one, is to provide clear and useful information while maintaining transparency. Uh, I always make an effort to get back to media outlets when they reach out to us. If I don't have the answer, I make an effort to reach out to that department director or their liaisons to make sure that we get an answer because the more um, it's important to have that good relationship with the media and the, the, the more news we can share, the better news we can share and the better the relationship is and then we expand the reach of the city and it's just kind of like a, a domino effect from there. So, and that plays into number two, increasing local and regional awareness of the benefits of living, working, and visiting here. Um, and uh, A, B, C, D, I've been very busy attending uh, ribbon cuttings, uh, city-sponsored events, um, occasional independent business events when it calls for, and uh, I've been active doing all of that. Uh, regularly work with members of the media, uh, foster and maintain relationships with community partners in an effort to expand outreach and grow the city's reputation. So for example, a week and a half ago, Todd and I spent half a day at uh, the Rock Island Arsenal on their community and business leaders tour. And of course, we know our partnership with the Arsenal is very important. Uh, I've attended numerous uh, school district events um, in an effort to promote the, the city school district. And uh, of course, we maintain a positive partnership with other local governmental entities. Um, number three plays into what Moses, sorry, Alderman Robinson had touched on, um, provide easily accessible communication with Rock Island residents, businesses, uh, and visitors about issues, projects, and services in the city. And of course, here we are, number A, the communications department will make every effort to convey information from city departments regarding um, current issues, projects, or services. Uh, and number B, moving on to Rock Island Unplugged, we've already had one that featured department directors. Um, I spoke with uh, Alderman Healy the other day about when Stern Center is available, and the next up is to uh, schedule a, a city council edition of the Rock Island Unplugged and uh, going on past uh, lessons from the other event, um, advertisement for that and publicity of that will start much earlier so we can get a bigger crowd out next time. Uh, number four, develop a stronger community connections built on trust and credibility, as I touched on before. Um, and I kind of briefly went over how I've responded to resident questions, complaints and concerns, uh, providing timely responses. I think. Uh, people feel seen and heard when you get back to them. So for me, I, I, I take pride in trying to get back to people and provide them the answer, at least tell them I don't have the answer now, but I will find it for you and then I will get back to you. Um, building community connections can also come from ward meetings or events. 
Uh, I always fully support those. I encourage um, council members to have those. As we know, Alderwoman Gilbert has one next week and I will be actively promoting that and advertising that. It's on the um, website calendar right now. Okay, uh, I briefly touched on this, maintain positive and productive relationships with members of the media. Um, as a former member of the media myself, I think I'm uh, well positioned to do that. Um, I kind of came into this position already having those relationships in place, and I think it's definitely been beneficial. I've, um, you know, been very able, I, I've been very, I've been able to immediately have direct contact with um, pretty much every editor or reporter that I would, you know, need to know, and if I don't know them, I've uh, made contacts in that time since. So, and like I said before, I think it's important to have a reputation as a media-friendly city, uh, making sure that we've got accessible um, access to elected officials and experts, uh, and of course, as always, make sure the media is treated with uh, courtesy and respect. Now, six, enhance internal communications with departments and city employees. Uh, something that Todd asked me to do early on was provide weekly media mentions, which I've been doing um, weekly. Um, I hope all of you read those. I know as soon as you get that email, you open that up and, <laughs> and you see. <laughs> I know that certain people are reading them because I, I, I appreciate when somebody immediately replies and says, hey, you left out my interview on such and such. And so I, you know, even though I, you know, know I made, I left something out, I like knowing somebody caught that and they're paying attention. So it gives us a good barometer for seeing the reach that we're having. Um, I think that there's been an, a big increase in the number of media mentions um, since you created the position. And that, like I said, that's, that's very helpful to the city and its image. Um, and of course, highlighting employee accomplishments when possible through press releases, social media, or internal newsletter. Uh, it improves morale and pride. For example, two weeks ago, we had National Public <coughs> Works Week. And uh, with Mike's help, he connected me with six different public works employees, which I went out uh, each day and interviewed and photographed and did a little bio on each one on uh, Facebook and the city's Twitter pages. And those got tremendous uh, feedback, lots of shares, lots of comments. Okay, moving on, number seven. Enhanced internal communications between city departments and elected officials. Something that was an idea of mine when I started was uh, to, I, I had heard you before as a council express sometimes frustration with not knowing always what's going on in your own city. And so I've, I've been trying to make an effort to bridge that gap by providing you bi-weekly updates from the directors on their activities as reported to me. And uh, I hope that that's been helpful um, to an extent, kind of filling in the blanks for you and keeping you updated on projects and where things stand. Uh, number eight, enhance the city's image and reputation. Of course, we know this is always a work in progress, uh, but I feel like the ship is being turned around and I think that we are headed in the right direction. Of course, we know the benefit of that is attracting residents, businesses, and more visitors and stakeholders to the city. Um, Promoting our diverse community, that will also attract capable employees, and that can only help to strengthen services and programs offered by the city. Active and positive storytelling and media coverage contributes to the city image and will instill pride in residents in the community. Okay. Um, I do keep the uh, city's website updated with current information as best I can. Uh, it's always a work in progress. It's, it's actually a good problem to have because when you've got lots of things going on, there's lots of things to update. So I can't complain about having to do that. That means uh, lots of busy stuff going on with the various departments and uh, it's a pleasure to stay on top of that. Uh, the mayor's update Rock Island, something that I've been uh, staying on top of I uh, post information on current programs and events. Okay, update the city's website. This is something that I would like to get to. I've looked at other cities' websites, even Rock Island County, um, they've done a whole redo on theirs, and I think that we are um, due for one as well. I think that there are certain ch visible, obvious changes that we can make with our website, so that's something that I would like to visit. 
um, you know, here in the near future to kind of update that. I think there's some, we can make it easier to navigate through and make information easier to find. And I've noticed that a lot of the fonts are very small and it's hard to read even on the, um, all of the city council members profile pages and the mayors that the print is so small. Just, if we just made it more user friendly and, and uh, visually uh, pleasing, I think that that'll benefit us as well. So that's definitely on the list of goals. Uh, number 11, expand community engagement and partnerships through regular presence at events, business opening, and celebrations and city functions. Um, I think that uh, we're definitely doing a good job at doing that because obviously when you've got, when you're there, when, you're, when you've got a seat at the table and you're present at these community events, uh, that's the best way to let people know uh, who we are and uh, that we're, we're watching, we're attending, and uh, we are there for them. Okay. 12, provide timely and accurate communication with residents, business owners, and stakeholders. I touched on that briefly before about uh, making sure that, you know, good communication 101 is just basic customer service and making sure that residents and business owners and stakeholders that make sure that they feel heard and uh, that they are important. Provide support and promotion to local businesses in the school district when appropriate. Uh, that's definitely ongoing and always a joy to do when we can step out and step up and uh, provide that support and promotion. Uh, something that we're gonna be doing here shortly that uh, I know has been mentioned uh, I know that it's being developed is that there's going to be an internship program hopefully with the Public Works Department and between the school district and I think that that's going to be a fantastic opportunity f uh, and positive light on the city um, to promote that as well. Uh, 14, produce an annual report summarizing citywide accomplishments. So this is something that's going to be kind of a, um, a project but it's going to be a, a good overall snapshot of successes in the city over the whole year. So, um, you know, the number of new hires that the city hired in 2023, um, the number of fire hydrants put in, the number of the overall number of times we were mentioned in the media, uh, the number of parks or projects completed, the number of businesses that opened and so on, things like that. Um, that'll be a good kind of tool to give you an idea of uh, what's happened in the year. Um, uh, 15, conduct a citizen survey. This is something that uh, uh, Todd and I have discussed and uh, Samantha and I have exchanged information on this and uh, an RFP will be put together. We'll have to put out for an RFP here soon for that and that's something that will help us generate feedback from residents uh, through a targeted survey and that can identify strengths and weaknesses in the city. Um, and then maybe we can implement changes as necessary going forward. Okay, 16, identify methods to connect with residents. Here we go, Alderman uh, Robinson. Through a non-traditional means of communication, um, just as you had mentioned, uh, we recognize that certain populations may not have access to the internet or digital forms of communication. And uh, we are, we are uh, working on a way to develop and implement those and definitely your ideas are welcome. Um, I'm always open to suggestion on that. And then finally, number 17, something that I've been, uh, has been on my to-do list is produce a monthly internal employee newsletter. Uh, and so that's, I'll just take that opportunity to highlight different employees, provide historical facts about Rock Island, um, which the library has been very helpful with. Um, I can highlight different, uh, recently hired employees, soon to retire employees, work anniversaries, uh, and any additional information that may be useful or fun for employees to know. And I think the overall um, goal of that would just to be instill a sense of pride in working for the city and uh, kind of allows the opportunity for everybody to get to know each other. Okay. And then finally, 18, provide monthly reporting on communications activities through the city's operations report. This is something that every, uh, all the department directors and their liaisons do actively uh, take part in. Um, I'm gonna be taking over the operations report here going forward, just uh, making sure that that's filled out and then getting that posted to the city's website. 
And then finally, number 19, expand the city's YouTube channel. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to expand the content on there so that we have something other than city council meetings or study sessions. You know, if eventually I would um, like to be able to produce short but informative videos like reels or, you know, like pop by the fire department and just get some footage of the guys doing what they do, you know, whether they're, you know, testing on equipment or rolling up hoses or whatever. Um, and you know, different departments go out in public works and catch them on the, the job doing something, replacing a fire hydrant or I don't know, plowing the streets. Um, and I think that provides a different um, look at the city and um, what's going on. That is it. Um, if you wanted me to go ahead and keep going, if, if you uh, read that, obviously we know who our target audience is. We've got various tools of communication. And then, as I've mentioned before, the media relations uh, portion of this and how important that is to making sure that we can get the word out and the, the message out about the city. Um, of course, it's important to disseminate timely and accurate information to the public, and that requires all parties to do that and uh, as I mentioned before, public opinion surveys, that's gonna uh, serve as a good source of information for us. Uh, we can use that to measure awareness of programs, attractions, and events, and then obtain feedback. And then finally, I just uh, added at the end there, the city logo. Uh, use of the city logo by outside groups, boards, and commissions is not allowed unless approved by the city manager. And that would be it, so. I will open it up to questions or comments. Alderwoman Gilbert. So I'm thrilled that you want to work on the city website because <laughs> the alter council members have been asking for that for at least uh, for two years. So um, that'll be great to have your input on that. Um, with regards to that um, on the current website, is there a way to add a section like a press room where you could, um, um, I know you post a lot of your press releases in the news and announcements, but maybe like links to some of our really great interviews that have been done or something, you know, or pictures of events, ribbon cuttings you've attended, something again mm -hmm. to just broaden what information we're getting out to people. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to doing that. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I know that um, we want to do a citizen survey, but before we do that, issue an RFP, an extreme amount of data was given to us in that ARPA survey. I think there were like 900 comments and I tried to read most of them. And there's a lot of good um, information, ideas, and themes running through there. Mm -hmm. So before we take that, I'm like, let's pay attention to what they've already said to us. Okay. That was only last summer, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's important. And since you're gonna be taking over the operations report, um, there's a lot of information in there that, I don't know, I'm not really interested in, but there's other information mm -hmm. that I might be, so maybe you could reformat it to give us better okay. well, information. I'd like to hear more from you at another time about how what, what information you're looking for that catches your eye. Yep. Yeah, Great. and when I say take it over, I don't mean, what I mean by that is I will just send out the yeah. Google Doc and then gently remind people, put your information in, and then just post it to the website. For really all the de department directors do all the work. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of mm -hmm. it is just like, okay, yeah. I'd encourage all council members to provide feedback on things like the operations report or the media, you know, things that we uh, might be missing that you're interested in or things we're reporting that you really don't care about. And so we can we can tailor it to what, uh, what appeals to you. Mm -hmm. One suggestion could be um, an employee portal. So if you're gonna redesign the website, 
<clears throat> excuse me, you can create an employee por portal, mm -hmm. which can just be a page that employees have access to, only employees have access to. Um, and then you can share information about, like you were saying before, uh, retirements, um, anniversaries, how long they've been with the city. There may be some employee only benefits or in announcements that need to go out. Um, so that could be helpful. Uh, we do that at our job. We have an employee por portal mm -hmm. that cuts us off from, you know, just a, a general tab. Um, also with your, like our YouTube and Facebook, Twitter, it's just being consistent. You know, if we, if we're doing a broadcast or if we're doing like, say you're doing a podcast on a Thursday, it just needs to be consistent because then people will know to tune in at that time and at that date. So they can be looking for it. If it bounces around, you're going to lose them. Um, mm -hmm. just from exam from, from, uh, personal experience, you, you, you will lose your followers if you're not consistent with even releasing information. If they know something's going to come out Tuesday at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. then they will be anticipating that. That can probably help with gaining the followers. Um, that's also can help you with, you know, what you can put on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, just doing little small podcasts mm -hmm. about the neighborhood, about something. You know, That's a good idea. there's more information because mm -hmm. most of the stuff that goes on YouTube, it's not for the people that are within the city. It's for people outside the city. You know, they scan YouTube to see what's new and going on in a different city. So okay. I'm really interested to see for like number 16, um, like what kind of examples we're coming up with for that communication with, you know, the non-traditional means of communication. Um, just if we can get some kind of examples of what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. of some ideas of how to accomplish it. And I know it's a tough task, so I'm not, I'm not continuing to bring that up because mm -hmm. you're, you're not doing it. It's a, it's a very tough task. That's why we couldn't handle it as a council, <laughs> and we kind of threw it off on you. So uh, because, I mean, it's just it's, – there's so many people that we're missing um, just, just to get information on. Moses, can uh, I ask right. a question on that? Is it communication to the residents versus communication communications residents to us? I think it's both. It's, it's, I mean, I like both. But one is a little easier than the other because you can send out a newsletter or whatever. Yeah. So we can get it to them. It still doesn't get it to us. Right. And so it's a two-parter. Yeah. You know, one part could be the newsletter just to get information out. We can get stuff out to them on a consistent basis. Right. But we still have to find that niche of how do we get responses back. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have found that when you're consistently sending out information, then it encourages them to reach out more to you and to start engaging with you and developing a relationship with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, do, I feel that, once again, that the, all, the, the, the council members, it's important that our, the residents in their wards communicate to them, too. I don't think we want to cut that off or try to no. eliminate that or reduce that, because I think that that's very important for us to hear a lot of things directly. Uh, that works for some, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. you're fine. That works for some, but some feel that we're the middleman, and we're only going to push what we want to push. Mm -hmm. So they kind of want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not everyone. Yeah. It's a good way for us to keep in communication with them. Mm -hmm. You know, in my town halls, that's why I have a good portion of my town halls for that. Mm -hmm. Give me your issues, and then I pass them on to right. our department heads right. or whatever else. Um, one mm -hmm. more question, and this is not just for you're you, fine. just in general. Do we have, like, a, a, a designated number that we can kind of create for nuisance complaints or questions, something like that, instead of going through that Rolodex of numbers that are on that <laughs> magnet that we have? Because sometimes those numbers are outdated, and they bounce you around to different places. Mm -hmm. Do we have one number people can call, and it's an answering serve, something? that we can, hey, call this number, someone will respond. That's the platform I mentioned earlier that um, Tim had mentioned to me, the, the 311 okay. like, nuisance. Uh, it, it's online, though. I believe it's like a click. It's, it's a click and complain is what it's called, like a click and you know share your concern kind of thing. But that's, that's online. I don't know about a, a, a phone number. Uh, definitely something worth, I we mean, I guess they call us. But I, I know guess they that call City Hall, so. That starts a lot of our issues. People call with issues, uh -huh. and they get bounced around to different departments. That department doesn't know what's going on, so uh -huh. they're spending 10, 20 minutes explaining their issue. Then they're getting frustrated because they're going to someone else who doesn't know. Then they go to some. Uh -huh. That's usually what I, I feel. I feel those questions. By the time it comes to me, they're, they're already done. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Sometimes they don't even know what department to call. <laughs> exactly. That's true. And the phone number only works if you've got a live body to answer it, you know. Right. Because nothing's more frustrating than to just get nobody mm -hmm. voicemail or whatever. We have a whole other mm -hmm. problem on our hands. People yeah. want to talk to live bodies. Mm -hmm. on our hands. What if you have a 24-7 do 
that answering. Yeah. No. Yeah, that that might also be a discussion in terms of staffing as well. Um, I mean, we did we lost somebody in you know the administrative position in City Hall, and uh, <laughs> so right. so take uh, manpower to kind of have that key person that that dedicated person to fill that role. And I and I know that I'm I'm the communications person for the city, but I'm. I, can't. Realistically, I, I am an entire department by myself. Right, you can't be that and person. There's, there's so much. There's just so many different directions I can go with communications and, you know, community engagement and um, strategies and, you know, the, there's endless potential with this position really, which is great, um, but it's also easy to look at see what's not being done or what hasn't been done yet, and so it's, uh, you know, definitely there's. Lots of potential here and lots of different directions that we can grow and, and keep expanding. Endless possibilities, but you don't have an endless budget to work with. So or time. You, you, have, uh, you have very real constraints, which I certainly am mindful of. Um, a few thoughts mm -hmm. from me. One, I think I really, really like the idea of the survey that's coming out, and I think it is different than previous surveys that the city has endeavored to do because it more measures the public's assessment of our transparency, of our accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having, we have countless conversations around here about whether we're transparent enough, whether, whether people are getting information, et cetera, but really we don't know unless there's an objective measurement taking place. And that's what this survey is for, right? We don't have a number that says we're at 47% or whatever denominator you want to use. Uh, that shows the public thinks that, you know, 70% of the public thinks we're doing good or bad or whatever. So the survey is instrumental to get a baseline of where we start starting and then how do we, how do we improve our communications to move that number up. Right, so the survey and repeated surveys on how do we communicate is so important for us to have an objective guidepost of what we're trying to do here. So full support from me on that. I think it's a great recommendation. Uh, I'm intrigued by goal number 14, producing an annual report summarizing citywide accomplishments. I think we all agree that something like that is a good idea. I just wanna highlight, I think that there is a lot of connections existing reports and things that might help align. Sometimes we talk around this table about aligning resources and, and sort of marching in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that the annual report that you're referring to is similar to the operational report that we get monthly from department directors, mm -hmm. which is similar to the strategic plan. In the, in the budget and strategic plan, we have um, like KPIs, basically, key performance indicators. Hmm. Uh, we have KPIs included in the budget and the strategic plan. And so, and then on top of that, we have CDBG, right? We have this plethora of data with CDBG about how we, we remodeled 500 houses this year or whatever, you know, the numbers are in CDBG. How do we take all of these things and sort of point them in the same direction that is then formalized in this annual report. And I think that that's something for us to think about is when we do our strategic plan, what are the kind of KPIs that then can be reported on at the end of the year in an annual report? So just thinking about what are we measuring in the operational report mm -hmm. that we get from the directors? What are we measuring or what do we aim to measure in the strategic plan? And making sure that that is what we're eventually reporting in the annual plan, mm -hmm. I think that will help align you know, our planning process with our execution and, and results. Just something I thought of while you were talking about that annual report. And then the last thing I was going to mention is CDBG. Um, there's a entire part, the citizen engagement plan or something like that. Does there, anybody remember in CDBG, there's a specific plan that the CDBG program is required to have through HUD that specifies how is the public going to be involved and how is the public going to participate in the CDBG program? It occurs to me that this is very similar or should be very similar to that plan and vice versa. So just, just for the sake of highlighting the, the mm -hmm. similarities between the two, working with CED to making sure that the CDBG citizen 
engagement plan, whatever the heck it's called. I can't remember right now. There's a ton of acronyms when it comes to CDBG. Even CDBG is an acronym. Uh, that thinking about not duplicating things and, mm -hmm. and using the work that you're already putting in here to make CED's job easier with the CDBG program. So otherwise, good stuff. Thank you. Well, Ty, I have to give credit to Todd. key in providing a lot of these ideas and kind of helping me formulate a plan and bouncing ideas off of him, giving me direction. So, um, yeah, I think I'm particularly excited about the idea of sort of consolidating the couple of different places that the city has KPIs and, and plans mm -hmm. into the annual performance summary or annual, whatever you call it here, uh, annual report. I think that will be helpful. And again, just establishing some baselines. We don't know how we're doing because we're not okay. measuring things effectively. Mm -hmm. and so, Well, I, I agree with what your comments are, but I think that society uh, and one of the reasons that, that the social media is so popular is that you get cookies. You get small bits of information of what you really want to know, mm -hmm. and you're not sitting here reading a 42-page report, mm -hmm. which someone will take, take a look at that and they'll say, I do not have time for a 42-page report, but give it to me in about 15 or about you know, 100 words or less, All and right. I'm on it. Yep. And I don't know if that if that is something one of your goals, or if that is something that's doable, or if that's something that you know. Am I out there in, in outer space? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please. No, it's just you know, people. People, their their time is very valuable, mm -hmm. and so we need to be uh, respectful of that and give them the information in a in a very brief narrative. They'll be, in my opinion, is they would be more likely to read it. I think the Parks Department is a good example where they have their annual report that the Parks Department puts out. Mm -hmm. But at the very beginning of the annual report that the Parks Department puts out, they have infographs mm -hmm. where oh. very easy, mm -hmm. this many visitors this year, this many Whitewater mm -hmm. Junction, whatever. Right. I mean, that's KPI. That's mm -hmm. a key performance mm -hmm. indicator. MLK does it too. <laughs> right, MLK. Yeah. Um, and so, how do, we, how do we share those KPIs in mm -hmm. ways that the public can consume? Yeah, I wasn't envisioning a 100-page report. After talking with Todd, I was envisioning more like snapshots of each department and then an overall summary. So just kind of broken down by department. Similar to the mayor's annual address even. True. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump on the survey real quick because I agree with what everybody said. The issue is targeted survey. Does, what does targeted mean? Number was it? Do you want to I'm speak sorry, to I'm that, sorry. Todd, it's 15. 15. Right. You're talking about doing your survey, residents and stakeholders. Targeted to me is you're not going to target every citizen or when right. I say household in Rockland. Right. The way I you're going to do just a third of them or whatever it is. The way I understand it is that the, whatever company we hire um, has a method for uh, picking out a, a certain uh, section of the population of the city, random, random say they sample. choose 500 people, and they're chosen randomly uh, for the survey. Okay. Yeah. I, this, this, just to talk a little bit more about the citizen surveys, there are companies that, that, uh, that do them for municipalities, and the importance of that is and you can kind of compare yourself to other similar municipalities in your area and, and they're really citizen satisfaction surveys they rank uh, citizen satisfaction with the various services that you provide the way you communicate with them they identify what's important to people what they're satisfied and dissatisfied with and, and they do it according to uh, you know uh, survey methodologies that validate the, uh, the the data so they'll mail it to people randomly but they'll also continue to click surveys until they have a sample that's representative of of your community and they can even do it ward <coughs> by ward uh, in mailing if they don't get enough of them they'll call people so they use you know they don't just post it on social media but it is random they'll allow they'll typically allow anybody to respond to it but the actual report is based on people who have responded that have been, you know, selected at random. Statistically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. covers the city. Yeah. 
and that's why I asked that. I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that, that it's not all 37, 38,000 people mm -hmm. or every 14,000, all 14,000 uh, households. Um, yeah, to get a valid sample from a community like uh, our size, they'll probably try to collect 500 surveys. Also with that, and I think it answers the question, I've seen sometimes people do surveys and every year or every other year or whenever they often they do it, they change the questions up and it goes back to what Dylan talked about. It's hard to have a baseline if you, and you have that the first time, but if you don't ask the same question yeah. this next time, you don't know if you've improved or not on that same exact question. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then yet have some questions, you don't wanna make it so long, that are more relative to that time of snapshot in time. Yeah, and that hits, uh, hits their approach uh, on the head, really. Probably 80 or 90% of the survey is standard all the time, so you can compare yourself to prior years. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 10 or 15% of it might be custom-tailored questions to stuff that's going on at the time. Yeah. Also, this is really digging into the weeds, but uh, when we talk about website and redoing that, and just because I'm thinking about it, and I, I'll pick on financials at this point, I think that it's that it helps to have simplicity we have our budget out there and we got a lot of financial numbers but in some cases it's not simple list simplistic pie chart you know whether it be and then you could do lots of different ones in lots of different ways and we may have to learn that and work with it is it a pie chart by departments and whether expenses and revenues whether it's numbers of employees whether it's whatever it is uh, and it or graphs mm -hmm. and being able to compare one year against another those type of things that I think that people would rather see that or understand that um, versus a list of numbers, and they understand that. So I guess I go back to that, you know, if we mm -hmm. simplify things, and, and finance could be just, one is it's easy an example, there could be public works, it could be whoever, that we put information out there that is relatively quick and easy, going back to Mark's comments, let's not make it a long page, hard to find type situation that people gotta read a whole bunch, mm -hmm. where's, where's the snapshot? So I don't mean to dig it. Right. Summary. Yep. Pardon? More executive summaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you. S oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say you see more and more of these visual graphic reports. Right. With, it's got numbers and you know very few, mm -hmm. not a lot of text. Go ahead. Sorry. And I was just going to say when you look at how to communicate to non-digital people, don't forget about like the libraries, the MLK Center, Project Now, World Relief, mm -hmm. um, even like the grocery stores. You know, maybe we can find some some way with them that we can, whether it's a community bulletin board or something, but post things there so that other people would see them. Right. That's really going. That, into those the are weeds, good ideas but. too. <laughs> but I wanted to it, touch on what the mayor was saying, <clears throat> and Dylan or and Alderman uh, Parker. It goes back to editing. You know, it's it, the the ability to say as much as you can say in as few words as possible. That's the key to holding uh, attention. You, you'll be amazed that it's almost as simple as communicating with our or connecting with our churches because our churches communicate to all their congregation who is a good sample of who we're trying to reach yeah. um, so I mean like it's just building that type of database uh, I know in my church we have announcements every every Sunday uh, if it's not great idea if it's not even live we, we put them on our website we, mm -hmm. we put them on our billings and I mean our boards pinup board so even connecting with the churches to, to mm -hmm. get the information out that's a great idea I think down the line something that could be pretty cool is kind of show visually you talk about YouTube the how on some things I know it would be a lot of work but mm -hmm. you know how are the leaf bags picked up mm -hmm. you know how are potholes filled you know it's because I know that's a lot of work sorry to throw everybody out of the but that, that's that. what I had in but, mind but, I think that's great but it's yeah that's it, it can what be I a two mind. or three minute video mm -hmm. or a five minute video and you know how's the water treatment plant work you know things like that grant you don't want to give away mm -hmm. secret information or whatever you want to call it but you know this is how we go down this path because mm -hmm. there's so many times that I get that question well how did this happen well if you here's a video, you know, this is the way I think it goes or mm -hmm. ways like that. But again, our society is going more visual. I mean, my dad got rid of the paper because of it. So now he reads it, he reads it digitally now. So, you know, he subscribes to that where, hey, I hate it too, but it's expensive, <laughs> man. You can even, <laughs> can even, you can even do that with the schools. So yeah. pull uh, some kids from junior yeah. high, from high school, and they can, they can be your influencers because kids will follow kids and mm -hmm. other things. And I mean, that's just something different when you have things being explained from the city from a kid's point of view. It's just 
something. This is how Denkman <laughs> Park got built. You know, this is you, uh -huh. you start here, and this is the how it got to there. Do um, have to watch our time. Yeah. Well, sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. It's just yeah. want to watch it. Like ambassadors, right? Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you talk about uh, interns. You know, that's that would be a way to work with them. You know, exactly. Kind of pin with what Moses mm -hmm. said. Hey, you have your team here. Let's work on four things. Public Works wants to get out mm -hmm. there this week, this month or something like that. You know, you go to fires or anything, Chief Graff can get out there, Chief Landy, you know, things like that, that get it mm -hmm. out there and you have, like you said, those kind of sponsors that kind of help get that stuff going. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be mindful of the time. <laughs> All right, we, uh, okay. Any other comments or questions? They uh, can feed them to Sarah or Todd, obviously, uh, even you. after this. Great. And uh, it's uh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's going great, by the way. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Alder Person Robinson. Gilbert. Aye. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Parker. Aye. Poulos. Aye. And Healy. Aye. Meeting is.